Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and uh, my dear uh, friends, let us uh, again talk about where we left in the last class. So, today we are uh, going to lecture number 9 which uh, is uh, of the course decoding comic studies and reading graphic narratives in 21st century India. So, uh, what we have been doing in these last 8 lectures right. So, you see that the prime interest for which I have designed this course is to create your interest into the comic studies and also to understand the complexities and nuances that are attached to comic narratives or let us say this new medium that is called uh, comic or let us say graphic which I will develop uh, after uh, one or two lectures right. What else I have uh, thought when I was designing for you is that most of the time the way we look at comic studies or the way we look at the very form of the comic is exactly not the same right. So, as our engagement our indulge with this course proceeds you will see that it has lot to offer it has immense possibilities and you remember uh, as I had discussed in the class that what Dali said that coming times is going to be the time of comics right. So, the reason is that it has infused lot of different form of narratives and ideas and discourses that were not possible in any other art form. So, you see there is a painting, you see there is a graphic, you see there is a, a lettering, you see there is a panel, you see there is a connection of 1 to 2 to second lot of things are connected to each other which is not possible with any other kind of let us say art form right. So, therefore, when we are delving into the details of this course when we are trying to understand we are trying to map this course that how to go about it how we are going to create a possibilities in a future for this comic studies or let us say for example when we are going for research into this we, our job is to take it with very serious approach our serious approach to this comics will only help us to understand its various mirrors or let us say dynamics all right. So, this is what I wanted to say to you and I am sure that whatever the reading that I prescribe for you, you read it before coming to the class right or let us say before you listen to this lecture. So, therefore, make sure that whatever readings I have prescribed or I have suggested not prescribed let us say suggestion I have made. If you if you have gone through let us say uh, understanding comics right and uh, certain books by Will Eisner where I am going to talk today again. If you have gone through those books you might have understood that what are the complexities, what are the nuances are very much attached with the comics and that is how, how you will generate a very different kind of interest in comic studies. All right, so, today what I am going to do in this lecture, after knowing the history of uh, western comics obviously not Asian, but dominant by uh, western comics Europe and America mainly. Also I discuss about the definition, so two things that I took in details one how to understand what comics is and obviously, I talked about lot of books, lot of ideas through which we can understand. Second what I also did is that you can see the history right, what is the origin of comics, 
what are the problems that it had when it was originating, how there are people who objected to it, you know, how people thought that comics had the potentiality to pollute the young minds and it is because of the comics our children are turning out to be deviant in the society and the challenges that it faced ban lot of challenges it overcome later on and now today in this lecture and coming forth what I am going to discuss with you is a theory all right. Before I get into it let me explain to you just for a moment what is the theory all about right. I am sure you must have heard Marxist theory, you must have heard feminist theory right. So, you know what theory is all about, but why do we talk about theory at the first place. So, remember theory and practice they go together and which is why after talking about certain theories I will pick up certain text and I will see that how we can apply this comic theory. So, what does theory do? It tries to gives us the way how we are going to move with this right. Let us say for example, feminist theory right. What is a feminist theory doing with the feminist text? It is talking about that what kind of a text are available, how they were patriarchal and masculinities attitudes were interwoven into it and how are we going to question those narratives which were speaking against the rights of women right some more on it. The theory what it does it also paves the way let us say for example, Helen Shikshaw's a creature feminine right what it does it tries to tell that what are the things that we are supposed to do with our writings. Let us say Marxist uh, theory what it does it asks us to apply those ideas to the given text and at the same time telling you that why it is difficult to find out one particular understanding and sometime what happens theory and praxis they do not go along. The very reason is that theory when you are formulating a particular theory it is almost impossible for any theoretician to talk about all the context and conditions. So, therefore, keeping this in our mind what are we going to do? We are going to discuss certain understanding given by certain people and we will see that how are how we are going to apply these ideas to our <coughs> text all right. So, now let me move to the slides and ask you certain questions. So, before remember if you recall my class what I have been doing in my class I never give any points and you take it and go home and enjoy with it. The methodology that I apply even in my physical classroom and let us say if I place this recording lecture as an online classroom I always begin with certain questions that disturbs you. I ask certain question which is intended to create a kind of a problems in your mind. What I mean by problem that questioning your assumptions right. So, today also or let us say in all my lectures what you will interestingly find that I am beginning with a particular question and the reason is that we all individuals have certain assumptions to read something with a particular fashion or to understand something with a particular idea. Let me give an example and then I will come to that. So, I think you will understand why I am building up uh, so many uh, why I am building up these ideas to come to the direct to the point. Let us say for example, the moment you listen the city called Banaras right immediately some of us have in our mind as a spiritual city right. This is a place where worldly religious people live right and obviously, certain histories and myths that are associated with the city it all come in your mind. But there is also possible that a person who lives in the city has witnessed many more than this what you have assumptions right. So, sometime what happens our assumptions are based on someone else's narratives. We have not experienced at the first hand. 
so that is a problem but the moment we experience it we see no that is not true it's more than that there is something more which must be talked about this city but it has not been talking about so people have not been talking about in the same way all those suggested readings which i gave you in past eight lectures if you have even gone half of it you must have understood by now that why i am giving too much emphasis that comic studies is not something the way we understand it's more it's beyond what we understand right so today we are going to discuss more its apparatuses more its functions and obviously this lecture is more concerned about theory all right so let me show you the first slide first see this slide and uh, give your five minutes to this all right the reason is that at apparently what you see and when i will explain about it you will see this is not what it is right once you see so you will what will you do right what will you do with this you will uh, first look at it and then you will see this is a simple certain pictures are given to this in the certain frames and certain panels there are certain writings are inscribed something written on it which are meant to be read and obviously certain colors certain figures that's it right and then what you will do you will read it and you will try to make a sense out of it before i come to that i have something else to talk about right what is the things remember my dear friends there are three people involved i'm deliberately saying three people which means i'm giving i'm personifying text also someone is called author and someone is called reader right what does authors do when they are writing any particular page right they have a very different set of mind talking about specifically in the context of a comics what they do when they are writing they think about lettering before they are writing they think about a panel they think about the kind of a figure they are supposed to use they also think about the color that they are going to apply they also think that what will make this book in like coming like what will make this book interest to the readers how readers will be interested into this also what is the message that they want to convey and obviously every author has a different technique different styles different format and they will definitely experiment with this all right so this is how author starts penning down and then he produces a work of art looking at the second person that is a reader what does he do let's say for example we all of us we pick up a particular comic book and then we start reading about it later on we realize that oh color has also something to do with this or oh, really the kind of a figure it is deployed it also has something to do with this remember whatever i am speaking listen to carefully the reason is that i will speak theory and you won't be able to relate if you don't understand what i am saying and later on when i will be talking about one or two particular text that how this theory are deployed how these theories are deployed you we can make a sense right so what does a reader do he looks at the text he start reading and later on he realizes oh this is also has to do something with this this also has something to do with this this also has something to do with this and therefore later on he does it but in the case of the author what reader does in the later stage author does at the first stage right and which is why that is a particular reason author and reader 
experience of looking at the text goes very differently, right? So, author is a one, but readers are many, like they are n number of readers. So, author may have a certain set of audience in his or in her mind, but obviously when the text is produced, it is not limited only to the intended reader. There is a possibility, in fact, immense possibility that he might have never intended a particular set of a community or a group, they also might have grasped it and they might have also been reading this, right. So, keeping this thing in a mind, we will talk more slowly and gradually and I will keep explaining to you all the important points because this theory is another significant component to understand the course title that I have designed for you and the very idea with which I am offering this course to you, alright. So, now your job is just to look at this and I would suggest you just bring a pen and paper and note down that what did you see and when I will explain to this and then you will see the kind of a gap that you have in looking at this picture and later on when I am explaining this. You have to ask this to yourself, why is it so that you missed it? I will explain you why. Just now, you will miss it sometime. The reason is that you are not trained to look at this particular page or to read anything in a particular fashion. It is only possible you go through that particular page when you are told. So, so far we have been habituated to read it. Let me, let me give you an example of myself. When I read a particular textbook, initially in my childhood days when I was reading let us say comics, obviously I never understood the importance of a panel or let us say importance of a colors. Later on I realized after knowing comic studies that color without knowing the color, we are incomplete in understanding like it is in the meaning is incomplete. Even the color itself connotes the meaning, right. Later on we realized that why this like I have talked about all that panel so movement and all. So, I realized it why this panel is also contributing something else to our meaning. So, therefore, what we are doing in this class, we are trying to elevate your status not as a common reader, but as a one who is a serious reader of a comic studies, alright. So, now look at this pic and I would give you one or two minutes to make notes of it that what you understood by looking at this pic. So, look at the pic please. Now, <coughs> you see the pics, this is just a one pic that is available on your uh, uh, desktop, right, like, or like what you can see on the screen. So, the time when you are making the point, let me uh, speak something for you. So, the lecture that I have titled Beginning Comics Theories, it is going to provide you the basic idea, right, like look at this picture, like right? this is how I am going to give you the basic idea of a comic theory, right. And uh, we will also discuss uh, 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 Will Asner's uh, comics and sequential art and Scout McCloud's understanding comics, alright. So, now you look at this pic and this pic you can understand immediately if you have, if you have not read. So, please I will anyway I will show you the book by Will Asner's comics and sequential art which I have been talking about it, right. So, if you have read Will Asner which I suggested constantly and it scout my clouds understanding comics, this will help you, alright. So, now you see the pic, what interestingly you notice in this pics, right. In the pic what you notice is, let me see, after dinner, he took me into my old room, come we will talk while I pedal. It is good for my heart the peddling, but tell me how is it by you? How is going the comics business? 
comics talking about the comics this is a new way of looking at the comics then i still want to draw that book about you the one i used to talk to you about about your life in poland and the war it would take many books my life and no one wants anyone anyway to hear such stories then next i want to hear it start with a mom tell me how you met better you should spend your time to make drawing what will bring you some money you see this is a very serious concern that it shows right i'll talk about it but if you want i can tell you i lived then in skozoa a small city not far from the border of a germany right and then what you see i was in textile business buying and selling i did not make much but always i could make a living right so that is how you read this right so what do you miss then this is how we read and obviously we just have a we just look at a we just see a glance of it the pictures and we look at the picture as if is a entertaining or it just to create interest that is how you will see today in the lecture when i will be talking about further this is not just about creating an interest in you it's more about generating a meaning right so which is why there is a huge problem when people are talking about what is the smallest unit of a comics so people say it is a littering or it is a kind of bubbles right these are a smallest unit but remember which i will talk in more details but remember are they complete in themselves do they suggest anything in themselves suppose electron proton neutron as it is called the smallest unit suppose if i understand the physics properly but do they make any meaning in itself the answer is no they do not make any meaning in themselves they are incomplete without each other and that is why there are thinkers whom i am going to discuss today they say no the panel is a uh, smallest unit right and which is why they want to see things together because that is how they make a meaning now what we did when we look at this page when we read it this page we just read what was written we did not pay any attention to the pictures we did not look at what this picture is speaking to us how this picture and later written are contributing to each other how are they bringing some meaning to us we did not discuss this we did not think about it and we are i'm sure going to move to the another page and to read it and we are trying to make meaning out of it but later on you will see that they are saying something more right look at the pic again please look at the pics now i'll show you something more which you might have not noticed see the pics and now you hear interestingly you realize that he is in the circle right you see i'm drawing he is in the circle right i was in textile business buying and selling i did not make much but always i could make a living so simply what you saw that this is the person is in circle absolutely right there is absolutely nothing wrong into it but now okay here what you see in this panel in this panel what you notice in this panel you read it would take many books my life and no one wants anyway to hear such stories that is what you read fine makes lot of sense and what you noticed the half part of the body possibly just two hands right and the handle of uh, the cycle maybe right and and the posture to which he is sitting right what do you see in this in this you see 
the face of the person with whom he is talking, right? That is it, that is what you notice, right? Now, <coughs> look at the picture as a whole, right? Picture as a whole, then what it will do if you zoom it, right? If you zoom it, what interestingly you see that this is created in such a way that with even if it crossing one panel to the another, but it is trying to show one person. Let us say this is a hand. Now, you see in continuously without breaking your uh, without going through the panel, you see this way, right. You see this and now here this one is used as a wheel and here it is a leg. You see the person, wait let me draw it. I am sorry, Anapua. Here you see the hand right this now what you see is a here you see the entire there is a person who is a peddling so now you see <coughs> we missed it we saw that it is one way what is trying to do one side it is trying to show you different different panel where different different parts of the bodies are communicating but if you look at the page in a whole, what interestingly you see, it is nothing but the one person on the page who is speaking. So, here it is a wheel, it is a handle of which is holding and that is the face, right. So, here do not you see, there is an interesting way to look at which we miss that was done deliberately, that was a done deliberately, alright. So, the purpose why I showed this to you is just to make you understand that there is a deliberate attempt, there is a, a deliberate attempt by the author to do or to experiment with these kind of uh, images or to create a panel like this, alright. So, you will know more about it. So, now moving to the slides, now look at the slides please. So, here what is going to what I, what I am going to do is that uh, this uh, you see there are uh, certain books which I have mentioned Thierry Greenstein right remember this name right and if you if you are not able to see this you can see here Thierry Greenstein Thierry Greenstein so the work of uh, Thierry Greenstein the system of a comics and comics and narration and we are going to look at also obviously in the next lecture maybe Bart Beatty's comic versus art. So, here I have a suggestions for you that I would suggest you that please read these three books for sure. So, these books not only define the form and features right these books not only define the form and feature of the comics, but they also delve into the nature of storytelling that is made possible by the affordances of the comics medium. So, what we are trying to understand that how does comic medium operates, right. So, I just now showed you this sample, right. This is nothing but it is a how this is only possible in the comic mediums, right. It is only possible in the comic mediums, how does comic mediums operate. So, what I will do, we will move towards a theory of a comics for better understanding the form. Now, uh, there is something more interestingly that we see. The interestingly that we see is, uh, why is it so that people from France or let us say French communities have dominated across the world either it is a painting, either it is a literature, either it is a comic medium. You name any art form you will see that the French communities or let us say francophone people, the people who are speaking or writing in French have dominated. Obviously, 
there is a contribution of a lot of contribution done by German people as well, but overwhelmingly response we see when it comes to the contribution of French people, right. So, you see all the important uh, movements, symbolism, expressionism, Dadaism, right, futurism, name any ism, existentialism for example. Like you cannot think about the idea of existentialism if you do not think about French writers or thinkers. You cannot, it is not possible at all. You cannot think about the painting, let us say expressionist painting or cubist painting. Like obviously cubism started from the Italy, but uh, later on it was also pushed by uh, French people. Expressionism you see, right. So, this kind of uh, movement was pushed by French people and what also something that we are going to understand, it also that the cultural condition was uh, quite productive, very productive of the French people. Culture was booming, at the same time they have a community in a different places. Let us say for example, in India, we had a, a Puducherry, Pondicherry, which was nothing but uh, dominated by the French people. It was a colony of the France and even today if you go to that place, you will see that it more speak about the French culture, right. And so, something done in the France obviously will travel to India as well or to Latin America or let us say to Africa. So, here what I am talking, I am trying to make a point that it is almost impossible even Greenstein is coming from the France like many other comic uh, uh, traditions and artist. Even in the previous lectures I have talked much about French artists that how have they contributed in the comic studies like the way they did in other uh, form of art. So, the idea that I am trying to speak on is this that how it is almost like we are we have to deal with uh, French people and I am sure that when it comes to philosophy and I am sure that we cannot think about the western philosophy without thinking about the contribution made by the French philosophers. Let us say for example, I am sure that you all are familiar with Derrida and obviously Kristeva right, many more in fact. You, you name, you will see more than 10 to 15 names associated with his. So, the point what I am making by talking about this is that we have to be familiar with the French culture to understand the contribution made by French people. Because remember, what you speak is bounded by the tradition that you belong to, right. And which is why I make a very uh, vociferous remark that existentialism would have never emerged in the same form in India the way it emerged in European countries because our culture was not in a such a way that it creates existential crisis for us. It would have like Indian culture or Asian culture I would say the tradition never creates any kind of a condition in which we feel existential crisis, right. So, the point what I am making by giving this example moving like getting diverted to the other subject, the reason why it is related to make you understand comic studies that once we know comic cultures, we have to also know to know the comic culture, the French culture that how they both correspond and then only we will be able to understand because there are n number of people who have contributed or developed this field alright. So, now going back to the slides. So, French uh, these uh, uh, France it has see before I uh, talk about the, the slides just something more that American comics take inspiration in many aspects from the French comic community right. So, uh, let us say later on it spreads to Canada and then later on francophone areas. So, so, this French comic theory is considered advanced due to several other factors as well, right. There were other factors as well. 
So, what else, why it is also important to know the French historians or let's say French comic artist is also because they have influenced other artists as well and it's not possible for us to read comic artists, let's say Americans without knowing about the French artist. The reason is that they have highly influenced French uh, artists have highly influenced American. So, let us say, let me give you an example, you will understand very clearly that if you are reading today, let us say Hindi novels, you cannot understand Hindi novels if you are not familiar with the English novels. The reason is that Hindi novels are highly influenced by the colonial conditions, right. And if we do not know the culture of colonial conditions, we won't be able to relate with it Hindi. So, people think that they are from Hindi belt, they have read Hindi, so they can understand Hindi novels. But understand it's just about reading, like I, I just showed you the sample, right. If we read the comic like this, obviously we are not going to understand. So, therefore, remember my dear friends that this is nothing but a methodology. It is a methodology that you have to be familiar with other form of writing as well which has or have influenced particular genre or medium or particular art, alright. So, now let me look at the certain factors why French people had a lot of dominance, right. So, going to the slide number 1, you see that France has a strong historical and cultural ties with several francophone overseas territories which has helped to spread the popularity of a French comics beyond francophone Europe which I talked about uh, just now. And then second reason what you also see on your uh, on your screen that French comics have a long history <coughs> of producing mature content aimed at an adult readership which has helped to establish the medium as a serious art form, right. However, that is a very uh, uh, debatable to say that uh, what is a, what you mean by matured content, right. But just to make you understand that uh, in one line that the idea that, that French people were more imaginative, let me put it this way, right. Saying that it produced more mature content, I would say that they had, a, they, they, they were more imaginative, they could experiment with the form, they could talk about uh, different themes differently, right, which was not like like, like like people of other countries were still struggling, but the people from France could do this very easily, right. So, this is why I would say that the like that is why I made this point that uh, uh, that it that the French writings were considered as a very serious art form, all right. So, understand this way, it is not I am talking about something being biased towards a French artist or French writings, but rather what I am point I am making is this that they uh, were more imaginative and they had a more technical uh, advancement, technical advancement does not mean uh, in terms of technology, which means that with their skill, creative skill they could, uh, they could experiment with the technicalities in producing work of art, alright. So, obviously, uh, uh, one very important reason that I just talked about that uh, the, the historical and cultural ties that they had, alright. So, moving to the next slides, now here you see on the screen that uh, this helped to establish these two important reason help to establish the medium as a serious art form and uh, we have the French comics theory reader that came in 2014 that was edited by Ann Miller and Bart Beatty. Never ever forget this name Bart Beatty, which I will uh, 
take in details in the coming lecture about the contribution of BART BT. All right. So, it is a very impressive collection and I would suggest to you that if possible try to read uh, the French comics theory reader. All right. So, uh, uh, that gives insight into ongoing debates among French critics while also integrating organically with the broader field of comic studies. So, French theory a movement of a thought that had originated in France has also been applied to subject as wide ranging as gangster rap, Harlequin, romance reader, Star Trek fans and even the supposed philosophical subtext of the Sinfield series. So, this has allowed for the work of scholars and critics to be applied to popular culture in a sophisticated way. Overall, the combination of these factors has helped to establish French comics theory as a sophisticated and advanced field of studies. So, now here we come with a name which you should never forget along with uh, uh, sorry along with the Bart PT right, but I will talk about Bart PT later. So, here we have someone called uh, uh, Thierry uh, Grunstein right. So, Thierry Grunstein is a comic expert born in Brussels is very important to know where he comes from Belgium and is one of the foremost scholars of the medium and he is the founding publisher of Edition Delaine of French comics publishing house and has written several books on comics. One of his most well known work is the system of comics that came out in 2007 which was originally published in French in 1999 right. And uh, that was later translated by as you know the no one else but Bart B T and uh, Nick uh, uh, Gwen, right. So, this is the book system of comics by uh, by uh, uh, Thierry Grunstein. So, which was uh, 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 this, this book is a very ground breaking work on comics that explains the subtle complex working of the medium and it is a unique way of combining look at this visual, verbal, spatial and chronological expression while also providing a comprehensive framework for understanding the structure and the language of comics. Grunstein ranges like it ranges broadly through the history of a comics and uses examples from a wide variety of countries including the United States, <coughs> England, Japan, France and Argentina. He describes and analyzes the properties and functions of speech and thought balloons, panels, strips and pages to examine methodically and insightfully the mediums of fundamental processes. <clears throat> From this, Grunstein developed his own coherent overarching theory of a comics, a system that he builds on existing studies of the word and image, right. Remember these two word and image paradigm while adding innovative approaches of his own. So, this book the system of comics discusses the principles of orthology that is a very important which I will talk in a few minutes which is the multi layered meaning of a comic text erected through the oscillation between Tessas and Decaupas right. So, see these are the something I would say maybe uh, jargon maybe let us say for example, just to make sense. So, for now you remember this orthology, tressage and decapause right, but 
decoupage is nothing let me uh, write it for you first trissage is the act of waving right later on waving was not exactly made the sense then it was said braiding right now <coughs> you can understand the significance of this why these things are important trissage and decoupage right so as i was talking that this trissage and decoupage or let's say orthology is important because you are not writing a novel you are not writing a poetry you are writing a comics and why do we need to come up with a jargon sometimes you say that you are using a lot of jargons and let's say for example that how we make a difference between uh, one book to the other book they all are written in english we made a difference with the particular reason that we are very much familiar with particular jargon used in a particular syllabus or in a particular field and that is how we made a difference that is how we make a difference that this kind of area or this kind of a lecture or this kind of a book belongs to this field because we made a difference let's say for example if i give you a book you can easily make a sense that it's a book that concerns law students you can easily make a sense that this book concerns medical students how they all are written in english you make this difference by understanding the jargon that are used right so why do we use jargons we come up with a new words for two reasons one when we see that what i'm going to speak or the conditions or the problem is possibly there is no such word available for it so what we do we coin let's say for example difference by derrida right <clears throat> this particular word was coined by derrida because what he was speaking was never spoken and there was no such a english word available in the dictionary that he could use to say the same meaning second reason is that when you are going to talk about something complex which is not easily can be transferred in a simple way then we have to come up with something new so here also when orthology decoupage trissage is being used it is not being used to make uh, something difficult but for a particular reason is this that what they are going to speak is only possible with bringing new words to you right so let me uh, explain to you so what is a trissage and decoupage for you so look at the slides now here you see trissage is the act of waving as i said right let me write it for you act of waving which means how the artist has brought different things together right how he has brought let's say panel how he has brought let's say lettering how he has brought let's say color everything together it's also possible that how could he bring the first page to the last page together right you look at this slide that i was showing to you you look at this slide so how is possible that he could create this particular image right so this is nothing you can say a result of a trissage all right so as the lecture proceeds i'll explain this to you all right so now uh, uh, coming uh, to the uh, uh, coming to the uh, uh, second uh, book by groenstein that is uh, called comics and narration which is a follow up to the system of a comics so in this book he develops his analysis further using examples from a very wide range of a comics including the work of american artist such as chris ware and robert crumb remember this name right and he test out his theoretical framework by bringing it up 
against cases that challenge it such as abstract comics, comics digital comics and offer inside reflection on these innovations. So, in addition to this, he includes very lengthy chapter on three areas that was not covered in the first book. First, he explores the role of the narrator, both verbal and visual, and the particular issues that arise, that arise out of narration in autobiographical comics. Second, he tackles what I mean, who is a he? Grand Steen. He tackles the question of rhythm in comics and the skill demonstrated by virtuoso artists in intervening different rhythms over and above the basic beat provided by the discontinuity of the panels. And the third, Grand Steen tackles the question of rhythm in comics and the skill demonstrated by virtuoso artist in intervening different rhythms over and above the basic beat provided by the discontinuity of the panel. And third, he, he brings up a lot of relationship of the comics to contemporary art. So, what I am talking about? I am talking about the certain addition that he made in his book comics and narration. right? So, the third you see on your slides, the third is he resets the relationship of comics to contemporary art conditioned by cultural history and aesthetic tradition, but evolving recently as comic artists move on to avant garde terrain. All right. So, here you see that is a very specific and new contribution that he makes in his book comics and narration. So, here is bringing the relationship between cultural history, aesthetic tradition and also bringing comic artist move on to avant-garde terrain. So, Gronstein's work has been influential in the field of comic studies and it has challenged the way scholars approach the study of comics. His approach is broadly applicable to all forms of interpreting this evolving art. All right. So, what interestingly we find in these, uh, uh, these books that comics and narration right? and uh, the book uh, by uh, Grenstein, the system of comics that is bringing how we can see that he is making a new contribution into this. Right? It's a, and also interestingly you see when we are reading this book as a literature student because I am presuming that you are uh, not uh, in like you have not engaged with this comic studies uh, since your school days or let us say for example your graduation days. But obviously, we have read comics, but I am talking about taking it as an academic scholarship or reading is reading it with the academic framework. So, if you be are reading Greinstein's work you see that he is talking about interdisciplinary field as well. So, now you see the comic studies is not complete in itself. Right? What I mean by not complete in itself that if we look at comic as a something that is that, that has a origin out of from somewhere then we will not be able to relate with it, then we will not be able to understand it. Right? It is very much part of our culture, the way other work of art were produced in the same way these work of art were also produced. So, here you see what is happening that he is bringing the relationship of comics to contemporary art right? and the contemporary art which means that how it is conditioned by cultural history or let us say for example, aesthetic tradition. So, when we are reading comics, we have to be also look at what kind of tradition it follows, where does it come from, what is the cultural history of this particular comics and the kind of a character, the kind of a theme, the kind of issues 
it is dealing with why is it so right so and at the same time it's not just why it's also how that is where you will try to understand that how to talk about this complex things artist has used new way to talk about it all right so that is why this Gernstein's book comics and narration becomes extremely significant for us all right so what I did in this lecture for you I just picked up Gernstein's work and told you that how he has contributed and brought something new aspect to us so it's my humble request that come in like before you listen the next lecture please try to read the suggested book that I have said even if you're not able to complete it I'm fine but read some pages so that it can make sense to you so uh, thank you so much guys for listening to me and bearing with me and obviously I know that there are a lot of things which I am not able to uh, connect or not able to speak. It's also because you see that this mode has certain limitations. But yes, uh, see you next time and we'll discuss the same thing in the next class and we'll talk more on it. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.